Hello, I'm Robbie Nelson. Uh, so far, all my videos have been about my Lancer Evolution, uh, but it's gotten a little cold, uh, so I've got it backed out of the garage, and I've got a new little toy in my garage. I've been autocrossing my Evo for about five years, uh, and autocrossing in general for about eight, but a couple months ago, a friend of mine let me drive a different sort of vehicle, and since then I've uh, bought one, and uh, through my learning experiences, I want to show you a little bit about it today, just to answer some of your questions you may have about it. So, if you would, join me in my garage where it's a little warmer. Well, here it is. Uh, it's a shifter cart. For anybody that hasn't ridden one of these, I highly suggest it. If there's uh, an autocrosser in your region that drives one of these, beg him to let you take it for a drive. Because I took my friends for a drive and that was it. I had to have one myself. Um, they use these for autocross and what they call F-125 is the class. They also do sprint races, which is what you may have seen on some TV channel. It's what these are used for mostly over in Europe. Uh, these are huge over in Europe. Uh, a lot of the Formula One drivers come up driving these. Uh, even the NASCAR guys uh, do quite a bit of seat time in these as well. Um, and they even take them on full-size road courses, you know, such as Mid-Ohio and whatnot, which is a very big strain on the, the engine with those long straight stretches. Um, the engine is a 125cc. Uh, this particular engine is a Honda engine with a six-speed transmission. The European guys, a lot of those guys use what they call an ICC in, engine, which is a cart-specific engine. But since this one has come off of a Honda uh, dirt bike. It's fairly easy to get parts for and uh, service. Uh, you'll have guys around that uh, at your local Honda dealer that knows how to uh, tear these things down, put them back together where it might not be the case for the ICC engines. The ICC engines make more power but you know you sacrifice in having people know how to work on them and availability of parts. I chose to go with the Honda uh, which is a little less powerful but then again it's easier to work on. Most of these engines are fairly uh, tuned right on the edge. That is, if you, if you want to get the most horsepower out of them. And a lot of that tuning comes from the carburetor. Uh, so you get what you know is a, a jetting kit, which has all the different jets uh, that you can change depending on weather conditions uh, to get the thing tuned right. Because you tune it on the ragged edge, you need uh, race gas. This is 100, 108 octane. Uh, VP racing gas, the C12, I think that costs about $65 for uh, five gallons, which is a bit expensive, but you may save your engine, and that is castor two-stroke oil that uh, you have to pre-mix with the gas. Uh, and then there's a lot of debate as to how much uh, that mix should be. But that's the engine. Uh, they, they do a couple things to, to modify these for the super perks. They take the kick start off. Uh, the way you actually start these carts is to just push start them, put them, put them in first gear, uh, have somebody push you and then pop the clutch. Uh, or you can put a, a strap around the, around the tire. Like such. Then you put it in gear and just give it a big pull. Um, what else do they do? Uh, this one has a radiator over on the side. This is a fairly large size radiator. Uh, this cart was originally sprint raced. I may go to a smaller radiator uh, to help get my temperatures up. Um, but they put a plug in one of the other um, water outlets here on the head. Uh, for autocross purposes, there are some things that you're allowed to do. You know, see your SCCA rule book. To know what all is allowed. Um, we've got a fuel pump. A lot of these won't have a fuel pump on them when they're on a motorcycle, they're just gravity fed, but you got a, a pulsed, pulse driven fuel pump that comes off, off of a vacuum line to, to drive fuel pump. Uh, and your fuel's right here. I'm not exactly sure how much that holds, but for my purposes, it holds a lot. You know, auto cross run ranging in about a minute range, I may do. If I'm lucky, eight in a day, so that's not a whole lot. So the fuel tank's very, very large. Shifters right here on the side. 
and it's just like a motorcycle engine. Your uh, six up, one down, five, five up, one down, neutral one in between first and second gear. Uh, that's about it as far as the engine goes. I do have a data monitor. If you come around here. This is what's known as a, a micron. Um, if I had this thing started, it has RPMs up here on the top. Water temperature. I've got a water temperature gauge <coughs> on here and also an exhaust gas temperature gauge. And this will log that data. Um, so you can go back and look at it. Exhaust gas temperature, critical for carburetor tuning. Um, this actually has a USB key that you plug in to download your runs to see how you're doing, to see if you need to change jets in the carburetor. My chassis is made by a company called Burrell. Here's actually the, uh, like the VIN plate actually fell off. But um, <clears throat> most manufacturers are from Europe because that's where most of the carting happens. Um, there were, have been a few, I think Track Magic made their chassis in the U.S., but most of them have uh, not done very well. Um, CRG, Burrell, um, I don't really know all of them. When you first get into this, it's not as important to have uh, the best or fastest chassis. Uh, what you want to look for is time on the chassis. These things, they don't have any suspension on them, so they, and the, the engines are pretty violent, so they shake a lot. So as they get a lot of hours on them, they start to, you start to see little things like uh, cracks in the welds of the chassis and whatnot. So you want to try and get one that's got low hours on it, uh, even if it's a older model year, as long as the guy didn't run it every weekend at the sprint track, you're probably, probably going to be okay. The chassis are fairly tunable. The axle in the rear, solid axle, um, but the stiffness of the axle is tunable. Um, changing it's kind of a chore, but you, know, you can do that. Uh, there are a couple of other places you can adjust. Up front here, there's this bar, and on mine it's a solid bar or uh, tube, but on some of them there's actually like a little blade where the tube is squished, and you can uh, adjust it to get to vary the stiffness of the entire chassis. And my cart doesn't have it, but some of them have uh, adjustable. Uh, caster camber peels right up here. Uh, this one doesn't have it because so I can't show you, but that's that shows you that the chassis is fairly adjustable. These have fairly cool brake setups on them. Um, these are, we got disc brakes on all four corners if you want to call it that. Since we got a solid rear actually you only need one brake assembly in the rear, but uh, you know you got in the back there are dual pistons in the front. We got single pistons which Evens the force pressure front to rear, if you know what I mean. Um, this is a solid mounted rotor in the back and up front, the rotor is actually floating. Um, and then you got dual master cylinders. These cylinders, master cylinders, don't actually have a brake fluid reservoir, so when you go to bleed the brakes, you got to have this assembly that put on here. Um, kind of a pain, but to have that assembly, but if you have the assembly, it's extremely easy to bleed the brakes. They actually uh, gravity bleed, so you don't even have to pump the, the brake pedal. Uh, you just open the bleeder screw, uh, which is right here. See that? This little Allen head screw just cracked the bleeder screw, and it'll actually gravity feed uh, to bleed the brakes. Nothing special about the brake fluid, just some nice uh, hot champ. I think it's a DOT 4. Uh, brake fluid that we got in here. Uh, there's a brake bias adjustment right here, you know, so you can adjust the bias front to rear. Uh, just moves this little bar over so it puts more pressure on one side of this than, uh, to the other.